Please be seated. Graduates of the class of 2013, mothers, fathers, spouses, partners, stepmothers, stepfathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, cousins, sons and daughters, and all of the rest of your family members and friends of the class of 2013, I would like to welcome you to the 15th hooding ceremony of the University of Chicago Law School. Graduation is always a time of looking both forward and backward. I'm sure that all of our newly minted graduates have been thinking lately of the time that you've all, been, you've all spent here at the law school. You no doubt have been spending some quality time with your friends. You have made here over the years before you all go to each corner of the world. The memories that you've made here are special and I know you will look back on these years at the law school as some of the most interesting and stimulating and even, I hope, the most fun of your life. Now the past few years have certainly been, shall we say, an interesting time for our country and the legal profession. You arrived here in the midst of a major decline in our economy, and in the past three years, you have seen, and in many cases experienced, the profound changes in our profession that have occurred in part because of that decline in the economy. All of you have seen major events transpire in your time here. You've seen the horrors of terrorism, and you've seen natural disasters at home and abroad. And you've seen the amazing sight of people running toward the danger to help those in need. You've seen uprisings in, in honor of democracy or striving for democracy all throughout the world. You've seen economic woes threaten the stability of economies throughout Europe. You have seen one member of our community struggle to lead our nation and dozens of other members of our community serving our country at the city, state, and federal levels. And you'll hear one of them shortly. You are taking your degrees out into the world at an extraordinary time. And we here on the faculty are very proud to know that you'll be representing our law school the University of Chicago, out there in the world. Now, until you begin to move your gaze from looking backward to looking forward, you probably won't internalize fully what it means to have a Chicago law degree. You have been immersed for a while in what we call the Chicago way, a way of thinking, a way of being, of doing, and you may not know it yet how truly, truly special your experience here has been. When I meet our alumni, they tell me one thing over and over and over again, that the University of Chicago Law School is life-changing. From the first day here until the day they graduate, they begin to think differently, they learn how to think differently, to approach not only law, but the world in new and exciting ways. Chicago lawyers are part of a proud tradition, and not all of our, not all law degrees, law graduates elsewhere share. The tradition that it is not your background, it's not your history, it's not your political affiliation, your station in life that matters. Instead, it's the quality of your ideas and your ability to express and defend them. In other words, the common phrase is, it's all about ideas at the University of Chicago. From the day you arrived here, you became part of this proud tradition. And I promise you, each and every one of you, that this will last you for the rest of your life. You also have become part of the University of Chicago Law faculty. 
really, or family rather, not faculty. Some of you may become a member of the faculty if you look behind me. Your classmates will be the people you trust in your professional lives, the people you go to when you need local counsel or when you need a consultation in an area that's not your own specialty. You will come back time and time again to meet with your professors, to talk about your new ideas, and to share with them your personal joys and professional triumphs. With any luck, you'll also even take a phone call and a visit from me when I come to visit you, either in Chicago or in every city that you're going to throughout the world. Basically, you're stuck with us, and I, for one, am very glad of that. So today is a day of great joy and celebration. Today we send you out into the world, out into the world to become lawyers of every stripe. Some of you will become judicial clerks, some will be government attorneys, some will become public interest lawyers, some will go into law firms and private practice, some will start businesses or go work in businesses, and some of you, as I said a moment ago, will become law professors. So today, we start you out on this journey and you will become not just leaders of the legal profession, but you each will become leaders of our world. As you go forward, do so with a happy glance backward. Take with you from here the tools that will help to make you great and to do great things. Take with you the friendships that will give you the strength to weather any storm and take with you the memories that will encourage you to come back and visit us often. We are all very proud of you, and we will all miss you very much. Congratulations, class of 2013. Now, I could not be more delighted than I am today to introduce to you our distinguished alumnus of 2013, Stephen Koch. So Steve Koch currently has one of the most demanding jobs and no doubt one of the most demanding bosses in the history of the world. He works as Mayor Rahm Emanuel's right-hand man. Steve became deputy mayor of the city of Chicago this past year. His main focus in that job is the mayor's economic agenda the creation of jobs, and the bringing of new economic opportunity to the city of Chicago. If you can think of any major initiative going on in Chicago today, Steve is probably working on it. Whether it's pensions, whether it's negotiating with the Cubs, whether it's boosting traffic at McCormick Place, you name it, he tries to make it better. And he does it all for one dollar a year, an amount that simultaneously skews our alumni earnings statistics downward, but also skews our alumni pro bono statistics considerably higher. Now, Steve is a perfect fit for a job that focuses on economic development. Before his appointment as deputy mayor, he spent 27 years at Credit Suisse, most recently as co-chair of Global Mergers and Acquisitions. In his time at Credit Suisse, he advised on transactions that total more than $1 trillion. He also comes with a long history at this university. He graduated from the University of Chicago with a JD and an MBA in 1982, and he has lived in the heart of the city since 1986. Steve became involved with the mayor's office since the beginning of Mayor Emanuel's administration. He worked on the transition team on pension and budget issues, and since the mayor took office, he served as a consultant on cutting the budget, negotiating labor contracts, and recruiting business to Chicago. He was recently named one of the 100 most powerful Chicagoans by Chicago Magazine. Now, Steve Koch sets a spectacular example for all of you, our newly minted graduates. During his exceptional business career, he has also shown a deep interest in, in service to our community. Before becoming deputy mayor, he served as chair of the board of the Sinai Health System of Chicago and the Greater Chicago Food Depository.
He was co-chair of the Green Ribbon Committee on Sustainability and Climate Change in Chicago and is a life trustee of the Francis Parker School. Most impressive to me, and in defiance of the University of Chicago stereotype, he and his son Jacob spent two months bicycling 3,100 miles cross country to raise money for the Sinai Health System. I was relieved to hear that Steve kept a business suit in the trunk of his van, uh, the support van, just in case duty called. Now, in addition to being a successful businessman and civic leader, Steve Koch has also been an active and engaged alumnus of our law school. He has served on the law school's visiting committee and its business advisory council. Indeed, the business leadership program that we began to enroll this year is influenced greatly by his ideas. And so I'm really extraordinarily proud and honored today to introduce my friend, our alumnus, our deputy mayor, and our recipient of the Distinguished Alumnus Award of 2013 to Steve Koch. Parents and loved ones, the class of 2013, Dean Schill, faculty, honored guests, thank you for having me here. It's really an extraordinary honor to have a chance to speak with you today. Actually, when Dean Schill asked me to speak today, I thought it was because he needed me to settle your parking tickets down at City Hall so you could all take the bar exam. That's actually the way it used to work. Dozens from my graduating class, and I'll admit now, including me, might not be members of the Illinois Bar today were not for the deal the dean at that time cut with some guy named Ralph down at City Hall. <laughs> I broke with the standard protocol a bit and started my greetings with the parents here today in the class of 2013 because really this day is truly about you. For the parents, this is really an extraordinary day of joy and satisfaction. You and loved ones and friends that have a glimmer of what law school is about through the prism of late night calls, reports of intellectual breakthroughs, tales about the Socratic method, perhaps some stress or minor distraction noticed on a visit. For the graduates, it's probably too soon to do a lawyerly assessment of the last three years. I wouldn't have been able, at the point where many of you are, either recovering from the experience of the last three years or perhaps recovering from the last several nights, to do a dispassionate assessment of what you might have been through and where it might lead you. So today, I'd like to talk a little bit about what you've accomplished, a bit about what you might have learned, and then perhaps most importantly, what I would hope you do with that knowledge. My three years at this law school were for me, and I really hope for you, the most intense and transformative of my life. But I know that I appreciate what I learned here today in a far different way than when I was sitting where you are now. Now, I'm sure most of the graduates today really weren't like me. In fact, I hope you weren't. Most of you sailed through law school. Most of you sailed through whatever you did prior to coming here, found law to be a natural talent, and immediately grasped how to succeed in law school. That was not me. As I stand here today, I can still feel a distinct echo of the abject terror I felt first quarter, particularly in elements of the law. I had the good fortune, but also the challenge, of taking elements from Edward Levy, former Attorney General of the United States, former President of this University, former Dean of this law school, and most importantly, one of the creators of the course. It really wasn't just that Professor Levy sort of came off a little bit as an austere man. He was actually the scariest man I'd ever known and have ever met since. I'm sure most of the graduates have had their own Ed Levy, a brilliant, looming professor who calls on you early in the first quarter of law school, and three questions later, you're at the end of a dark, intellectual alley with no escape but feeble, humiliating surrender. The good news is that within a short five or ten years, those nightmares pretty much have gone away. But with his dry, dusty wit, extraordinary intellect, 
probing questions, Professor Levy and all the other faculty who put up with us, some of us, some of them who are still here today, were beginning the process of teaching us how to think, analyze, and talk like lawyers. As I and most of those around me settled down, I began to appreciate what was happening to our class. While we were drinking from a fire hose of new ideas and concepts, we were also, almost unwittingly, learning a completely new way of organizing, thinking about how to regulate the human experience. We were learning how to separate passion from fact, to distill emotion from decision-making or analysis. Developing that skill is one of the incalculable benefits of law legal training. As you leave law school, some of you might have the challenge of tempering that skill a bit, of ensuring that the passion you have about the law translates into practicing or applying law that matters to people. Success on both a personal and a professional level will require your connecting your passion about the law to the needs and the lives of the people you're serving. It's true that your legal training gives you the distance you need to think logically and consider every fact and angle. But remember, the human experiences are the foundation of every issue. Thinking logically and dispassionately about the challenges in front of you does not mean being oblivious to the underlying emotions of those around you. There is unfortunately no course on emotional intelligence in law school, but developing it and applying it is at the core of being successful. And what is true for law, I believe to be true for most any profession. Whatever path your career takes, I think success requires a thoughtful blending of what you've learned here with a deep appreciation of the human emotion that underlies the matters at hand. Logic, analysis, and advocacy are all critical skills that you've learned and can now apply to whatever you'll face. I can tell you that all those skills are dramatically more effective when you let your native emotional intelligence guide their application. I was very lucky enough to be able to be taught this connection early. I had the chance to clerk after law school for a wonderful man who was not only a brilliant legal scholar, but a keen student of human life. He drove my co-clerks and I to think about the law in a slightly different way, perhaps, than we had learned here. He was certainly expected as clerks to provide him with a thorough analysis of the law involved in each case. But the moments I remember most from that year, the ones that influenced me the most, were those spent sitting in his chamber listening to a wise, just wise, experienced human being try to figure out what were the human elements underlying each case before him. Understanding, using, channeling passions to, to chart your path as a person and professional are just as important. I almost completely changed the theme of this talk after reading that talking about passion is apparently the favorite topic of graduation speakers these days. But I really think there are few graduates who have a greater need for those words than you, the graduates of the University of Chicago Law School. Let me explain why. There are few communities that value the life of the mind and the powers of reason and logic more than the University of Chicago. And I think we'd probably all agree that at the law school, dispassion is held in even higher regard. I have no doubt you'll continue to live and explore the life of the mind. But remembering the emotions of life, particularly in running your own life, is just as important. I believe that it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to succeed and to make a real difference with what you do if you pursue a career that does not engage you in a complete, passionate, and personal way. Now, I'm not suggesting that you immediately call the hiring partners at the firms you're joining and quit from your first law job. What I am advocating is that when inflection points in your career come along, take into account both the careful analysis you've learned here as well as that feeling in your gut. You can have a law degree and still occasionally let your gut guide you. Some of you may be thinking, I don't have a clue what my true passion is yet. I understand this problem because I lived it. I had no idea what my passion was when I graduated, but I did know exactly what it wasn't and that was to practice law. I was intellectually awakened by law school and equally by clerking, but I knew that practicing law did not truly make my tick, make me tick. You'll recognize that in many ways, this was an unfortunate realization. Here I was in law school with a law degree, 
Many of those around me were, in fact, passionate about the law and passionate about practicing law. I'm happy to report that more than 30 years later, at my law school reunion, many of my classmates were still passionate about the law and passionate about practicing law. I just knew that I personally wasn't. Pretty much as a convenient alternative, I stumbled into a then relatively unknown backwater called investment banking. It wasn't until I was a few years into a job in banking, a job, by the way, I was sure that it was a temporary stop until I figured out what I really wanted to do, that I realized this was not just marking time, but I actually had a job that absorbed me completely. I loved the combination of ideas, advocacy, and analysis that went into the transactions I was part of. I particularly loved the chance to use my skills helping people find a path through complex business issues that mattered deeply to them. I had found, albeit accidentally, a passion. I understand that I was extremely lucky. I entered the realm of investment banking and mergers and acquisitions at the dawn of its modern era. It was certainly exciting that my chosen path happened to draw a lot of public interest, but it was far more important to me that what I did day to day completely captivated me. Expecting your passion to find you is actually not a perfect recipe for success. My story is one of both being open to stumbling into your passion and being open to letting it discover you. My second career that Dean Schill referred to is all about passion finding me. About a year ago, I left the world of corporate M&A to become deputy mayor of Chicago. For those of you not from Chicago, Whatever you may have heard about Chicago politics is really not true. It's a dramatic understatement. <laughs> For my entire life, I've always been in love with Chicago. The people are hardworking, warm, real. The city is beautiful and gritty. And politics is the sport in town that is the most entertaining and people care the most about other than when a Chicago sports team is in the playoffs, go Blackhawks. That being said, my love for Chicago was complicated and a bit abstract in the context of a professional life that had me commuting to New York and traveling around the globe for 30 years. I'd always found a lot of time for nonprofit work, but I really had nothing to do with the complex world of city politics and no idea at all that it would interest me. When the opportunity arrived to work at City Hall in the form of a brilliant, but sort of insanely hyperactive new mayor who actually called incessantly until I said yes to doing this job, it made all the sense in the world. This job, for me, is the perfect combination of passion and skills, a chance to live my lifelong love for the city while using the skills I had originally learned in law school and honed over the course of my career. The questions we address every day matter on a very personal level. Does this city work? Can you live a decent, safe life? Can your kids get a decent education? Are there people moving here, creating jobs, making the city a better place every day? The problems the city faces, in fact, I'd say the problems faced by our country, are way too easy to bury in emotion. I would suggest that politics in Chicago for many, many years have tended to be only about emotion, playing to and off of people's passions instead of being about substance. In this place, you, the beneficiaries of this extraordinary training you've had, know better than anyone how critically important it is to attack complex problems by listening to facts, applying thoughtful analysis, and utilizing reasoned discourse and advocacy to meld emotion and the right outcome. That is part of why the skills you've developed here at the law school are vital not just to this city, but to our democracy. So wherever you start your job, wherever you live your life, please make engagement with your community part of that life. As you engage, new opportunities to discover your passions, put your skills to work, emerge. It both allows you to be an example of how to merge passion and reason, and it will be a vehicle for you to build and live your own passions. It may be called public service, but there are few things that I have found more personally fulfilling. Analytical understanding, persuasion, advocacy, those are the essential skills that you and I learned at this law school. But if I didn't let my passions lead me or occasionally let my gut guide me, 
I would not have been able to put them to their best possible use. You graduate into a far different world than I did 30 years ago. The world economy is finally starting to recover. The business of law is challenged like it's never been before. The need for legal rigor in all aspects of life have never been greater. One thing hasn't changed, the challenge of bringing emotional intelligence as well as the rigor of your reasoning and intellect to both everything you do professionally and to the challenge of charting the path of your own career. Enjoy today what I hope is a brief break for most of you before you start in on perhaps the bar exam preparation. It'll pass quickly. I predict you'll all ace the bar exam and successfully embark on your paths. I just ask that you do things you're passionate about, use the hard-won skills you leave here with to advance those passions, stay connected in a meaningful, dare I say passionate one more time, way with this, your professional birthplace, and you will make us all proud to call you fellow alums of the University of Chicago Law School. Congratulations and the very best of luck. It is now my enormous honor and my pleasure to introduce to you our faculty speaker, Professor Saul Levmore. I know that to our newly minted graduates, he needs no introduction, but our guests have not yet had the pleasure of experiencing Dean Levmore in class, so I'll provide you some background. Saul Levmore is the William B. Graham Distinguished Service Professor of Law. He came to the University of Chicago Law School in 1998. He's a graduate of Yale Law School. He also received a BA from Columbia University and a PhD in economics also from Yale. Now selfishly, Saul looms largest in my mind for his service as the dean of this law school from 2001 to 2009 because I had the great good fortune of taking over the job from him. I hope each of you is so lucky in your careers that you can step into a new job and a new role after such a person as Saul Levmore has held them. I cannot imagine anyone who could have handed me a law school in better shape than for Saul, and for that I'm immensely grateful. Now, Saul Levmore is probably best described as a Renaissance man. His expertise in law and economics has led him to have enormous insights into a wide variety of subjects, including torts, corporations, financial and risk regulation, nonprofit organizations, comparative law, public choice, I'm getting tired naming them all, corporate tax, commercial law, insurance, contracts, and copyright. And I'm sure I've left out a few. He has even written a book on game and puzzle strategy. Now Saul is also known and honored across the nation for his service to the Legal Academy. He is a fellow of the American, Arts of, uh, American Academy of Arts and Sciences, a past president of the American Law Deans Association, a former trustee of the Law School Admissions Council, you know that organization that created that awful exam you took before you came here? That was Saul was head of it. And a former trustee of the Skadden Foundation. So Saul is an incredible scholar, an exceptional administrator of our school, and an active member of the national legal community. But if our guests today want to know what makes Saul Levmore special, they need only ask our graduates because it is his extraordinary commitment to students and to the art of teaching that makes him a true Chicago legend. Saul Levmore, Dean Levmore, loves to teach first-year students and has continued to do so even while serving as dean. He is an innovator in our classrooms, having brought in such technology as eye clickers and experimented over and over again new ways of educating our students and reaching them. His sense of humor is unsurpassed on our faculty and maybe in the entire legal community. His off-kilter hypotheticals are repeated by alumni long after they have left his class. 
Saul is an absolute master of his craft. Every joke, every aside, technical advancement, and hypothetical is part of a carefully thought out plan to stretch and train legal minds to the maximum extent possible. Now outside the classroom, Saul has had an equally important impact. He is always, always a coffee mess, an event he created, so you should thank him for all the donuts and all the weight that you've gained. He's always there talking with students, checking in on your progress, seeing how you feel about whatever is the most pressing issue of the day. He engages everyone in the halls, attends every dinner, and is generally the perfect model of an engaged and engaging faculty member. And one of the most amazing things is, I have never gotten the feeling that Saul does this because he thinks he's obligated to do it as a faculty member and a former dean. To the contrary, he spends time with students, with you all, because he thoroughly enjoys it and considers it time well spent. I suspect that if you ask Professor Levmore which of the accolades are most meaningful to him, it would be the three times he won the award given by the graduating class for someone, quote, who made a unique and substantial contribution to improving the quality of student life and who enriched the spirit of community within the law school, end quote. And also, the award given him this year by you, our graduating class, for excellence in teaching. Saul Levmore is one of a kind, inside the classroom and out. He's one of the jewels of our law school, and I'm absolutely thrilled that he could speak with you today. Saul? Well, thank you, Dean Schill, and uh, welcome to all our guests. And of course, farewell to all our uh, graduates. So uh, now I feel like I should change my talk, having been introduced to somebody who stretches your minds. Uh, so I, I was thinking to myself, is the typical graduate more shaped by Facebook or by Wikipedia? Uh, and I, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, you know the answer in your own heart. Some of you use one, some the other. Some of you have never read a case because you're on Wikipedia and Facebook all day. And, but I want to ask you today, which is more important to you? And then I want to talk about the contrast between those two generation-changing innovations. Oh, let's agree on what they are. Wikipedia is informative, cooperative, non-opinionated, always evolving. It way dominates the encyclopedias of yesteryear that people like me grew up with. On the other side of the room, we have Facebook. It is as non-anonymous as possible. It is me, 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 me. Uh, it, or at least me as one presents oneself, I guess. It's about people rather than knowledge. It's full of likes. I, I don't quite get that part of Facebook. I mean, don't you guys dislike anything? I mean, everything is likes. But it constructs communities. It creates your social lives and it grows with you. We might say that Wikipedia fills and expands your minds. Facebook records and influences your spots in the universe of friends and trends. Each is egalitarian. Facebook is cumulative. You count those friends. You delight in public approval. There's no Socratic method to ever challenge you or anything. Wikipedia, I'm afraid, is a little bit more like this law school. Wikipedia is Chicago law. It's collaborative, but not centrally organized at all. It searches to be improved by additions, but also by deletions and lots of interruptions. It's like us. Now, the Wikipedia-Facebook contrast can be characterized in the manner of their production. One, obviously Wikipedia, is the product of unassuming teams, and the other is constructed by individuals. Individual self-description, you might say. Teamwork, individualism. These strategies are intention everywhere we look. 
There's an underlying puzzle here. It, it wouldn't be Chicago if the talk was not about a puzzle. So here, here's the intellectual puzzle for you. We know that every, know, every ma almost every major accomplishment derives from teamwork, whether it's spontaneous teamwork or organized teamwork. Every business is a team, every law firm, clinic, successful government, every one of those things is about teamwork. And maybe we let you down a little bit by not emphasizing that reality when you join us. But you were not fooled. You joined study groups, you participated in clinics, you edited student journals, you produced musicals, either because of the inner satisfaction you gained from teamwork, or maybe you just knew that teamwork was an essential skill to develop for your career and your life. Humans crave cooperation with others. We want to be recognized as individuals, but we also want to be partners, comrades, and yoke fellows. The puzzle to me is that we celebrate individuals even though we know that the team is the thing that really matters. The commemorations are for Michelangelo, Shakespeare, Christopher Columbus, Marie Curie. Graduation itself, at least superficially, is individualistic. We make believe it is about you. Occasionally we recognize teams, I grant you that. There is, for example, an interesting movement to allow Nobel Prizes, currently restricted to three people at a time in any field. There's a movement to allow it to be recognized, to recognize a team of scientists. But this brewing exception merely probes the rule. Nobels are like ESPN sports. We glorify the individual and we merely acknowledge the team. The statues in our parks, not to mention coins, stamps, the diplomas you receive today, they all venerate individuals. We celebrate the great dissenting judge much more than the coalition builder. We make believe that revolutions came about because of individual heroes. We challenge children to name a hero, like a favorite color or number or something. Great paintings, buildings, books, all these things are usually ascribed to individuals. Now, how often does one go to a park and see a statue of a committee? I know, you're thinking, ah, Iwo Jima, that was a committee. Well, the iconic Iwo Jima memorial isn't really about a committee, it's a memorial to all Marines, and it's based on a photograph and so forth. The famous terracotta army in Xi'an, China, is really the only group representation you can find on any list of the world's great statues, a list, of course, found in Wikipedia. With complexity, of course, comes teams. Films, modern wars, space programs, these things are much too big to be credited to an individual. But even there, only in the first of these, I think, have we figured out how to extol the team. For the most part, it's the significant individual that gets the commemoration. It's the emperor, the inventor, the general, the social reformer, the judge. That's who we idolize. Well, well okay, I should just add as a footnote, here we don't idolize any of them, we just criticize them from morning to night. That's just us. I mean, we don't have favorite colors. We don't do favorite numbers. I mean, we don't do any of those things. But I'm talking about the world out there that builds the statues. I mean, does anybody, does anybody worship a team of gods or celebrate an entire court? No. Few of us would be celebrating today if not for teams, if not for our ancestors or even our immediate families. These people made the right choices as between the individual and the team. In your past, in all our pasts, are people who struggled across borders and endured wars so that you would have a life to lead on your own terms. Sometimes they survive by separating from the team. I wish I could advise you when to do one and when to the other. I wish there were a formula that could tell you when to go it alone and when to trust the wisdom of the group. But I, I don't think there is such a formula. How do you know when to hide in a cellar or walk a thousand miles across mountains and start anew? When do you trust others for survival? When do you join a crowd and rush guards or nullify a legal system? The answer must be random or maybe the stuff of intuition or even legal reasoning or evolution. 
Self-awareness probably helps. If you rely on teams, you probably need to think about yourself a little more. And if you think you're an island, then you probably need to get out there and do some team building exercises. Oh wait, I can say that in your terms. If you obsess over Facebook, read Wikipedia. If you read Wikipedia all day, go try to develop a Facebook presence. When we identify great individuals, we usually find fortuity. Occasionally, there's a lawyer, a general, or a little boy with a finger in the dike. And those people are in the right place at the right time to be heroic. But only a megalomaniac or irrational investor would train for that role, for it's extremely unlikely to ever come about. And if it did come about, implausible as it would be that you would be in a position to be the hero, it'd be very unlikely that the skills you needed at that point were the skills that you had prepared. I mean, it's a waste of time to try to train to be a hero. Life's not like the Olympics where you choose, ooh, will I go after the individual medal or the team medal? Work is only a little bit like the Olympics. There are a few jobs that are individualistic. My job is fairly individualistic. But that explains the social skills that I and my colleagues uh, bring to the table. <laughs> For most lawyers, whether they're in law firms, government offices, businesses, or not-for-profit legal entities, there are episodes of individualism, but success depends on a team and your ability to work with others. The law school probably misled you. We implied, before you came here, that we could mold you into the next Cardozo, or Abraham Lincoln, or Mandela, or Nussbaum, or Posner, or Posner, or Posner, <laughs> or lecture Obama. But our offer was really to train you to have the skills that those people have. Actually, thinking back on that list, much better skills than the first two people on the list. We have sought to provide you with analytic intelligence, empathy, legal acumen, and determination. Therefore, if ever offered the opportunity to change the world, I'm confident that you would do at least as good a job as any celebrated hero I've named. But it's far more likely that the good that you will do and the satisfaction you will gain will derive from teamwork. If we had told you to come here, come here. We'll mold you into the best teamwork possible. You'll be the best teammate in the whole world. Come to Chicago. I'm afraid you would not have come. You would not have understood the value of what we were offering and indeed the value of what you now possess and what we celebrate today. You would have scoffed and suggested that if this team thing were true, then the team should borrow money and pay for your legal education. You would have been influenced by a culture of statues in the park and Facebook pages, and you probably would have undervalued all the teams in your future. But I warrant that we have equipped you to be a great teammate. Those statues, the individualism thing, the questions about your favorite hero, and even graduation days like this, these are small tricks, tricks to encourage you onward. Once in a while, a hero is convenient, but great teams are what we always need. You think of healthcare crises, educational failures, climate change, overcrowded prisons, civil wars, corruption, not one of these problems will be solved by an individual. All wait to be understood or even worked out by you as valuable members of the many teams that will be lucky enough to have you. Good luck. Thank you, Saul, for that great talk. And now we're going to get to the moment that many of you are waiting for. Indeed, I might say all of you are waiting for the conferral, the hooding ceremony. So we're just going to get into places and then we'll be right back. So what is Wikipedia and Facebook?
Dean Schill, it is my honor to present these students who have completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the law school. They have been awarded the degree of Master of Laws by the Board of Trustees. I, congr I congratulate these graduates on the successful completion of a program of advanced study in the law school culminating in the degree of Master of Laws. Will the graduates please come forward to receive your academic hood and then your diploma as I call your name. Elise Janet Adams. Ezg Babu. Maria Laura Bolatti Cristofaro. Konstantin Badarenko. Elisa Christine Cantrell. Chen Cheng Chen. Pauline Marie Kugulik. Sophie Cecile Marguerite Andre Guilain Del Wade. E. Ding. Dichun Duan. Melissa Erdadu. Guillermo Edinson Flores Boda. Michael John Frese. Shevanji Gangwar. Marcos David Garcia Dominguez. Antonio Garcia R. Medeiros Neto, Jr. Kiai Garigioni Abis Predo. Clara Gazzanelli de Almeida Cruz. Daniel Alejandro Gonzalez La Rosa. Felipe Guimareas de Castro Prado. Robert Edward Hare. Pakarat Hemrachatanan. Lirkan Hendricks. Megan Sarisa Howry. Anna Castrina, Castrina Izu Medeiros. Chang Ho Kim. Petor Sebastian Cloraman. George Hoyle Ko. Tatsuya Koyama. Carl Mikhail Kubra. Fanis Cristalis. Yasushi Kudo. Young Yun Ni. Ming Lai. Suiyu Lu. Daria Lopatina. Ling Luya. Robert James Maloney Derham. Federico Martins Alva. Yevgeny Maslenikov. Carolina Andre Mate Dabovue.
Leila Moshed Monsenyi. Marco Antonio Munoz Chami. David Nguyen. Feifei Ning. Maria de los Angeles Padilla Subarea. Yuha Pen. Vinicius Montarezu Picanso. Paul William Ramsey Chawe. Pedro Ignacio Rencorat Gutierrez. Cecilia Andrea Rinaldi. Prashant Roy. Fad Tofek Rumia Perez. Miranda Castanza Soldania Iziado. Matoya Sasaki. Shash Vat Shuka. <coughs> Nilesh Sinha. Yusuke Swehiro. Yuko Tanaka. Andre Chioye. Kazuaki Tobioka. Juan Tomas Turner Fabres. Olivier, Olivier MJMG Van Wawe. Lorenzo Vitali. Hagai Vovoski. Dean Schill, it is my honor to present these students who have fulfilled all of the requirements prescribed by the faculty of the law school to qualify them for the profession of law. They have been awarded the degree of Doctor of Law by the Board of Trustees. I congratulate these graduates on the successful completion of a program of study in the law school, culminating in the degree of Doctor of Law. Will the graduates please come forward as I call your name to receive your academic hood and then your diploma. Joshua Ferris Ackerman. Renee Allers. Bernardo Oscar Ayinza. Motenrayo Didiolu Akinmurele. Andrea Alvarez. Jalpit Rajnikant Amin. <laughs> Ariane Aime Pont Anradi. Jessica Jean Eret. Robert Wallace Armstrong Jr. Catherine Nicole Arnold. Tamor Khalid Aziz. Omabola Abike Babarinsa. Yu Rim Bak. Catherine Agnes Barrett. Rachel Cedrone Bell. Joshua Lewis Benish. 
Alexander William Bergerson, Patrick Joseph Bassinius, Chelsea L. Black, William Cody Black, Avril Alisa Blum, Gabriella Christina Botafal, Matea Boja, <coughs> Alexia Renee Brancato, Gabriel Lee Broughton, Caitlin Dorothy Brown, Colette Allison Brown, Fowler Brown Jr., Valerie Catherine Byrne, Alexander Hamill Bistrin, Jennifer Hope Chamal, Shaobo Chen, Carmelo George Camara, Edward Choi, Kara Brown Chomsky, Patrick James Connolly, Neil Harris Conrad, Kay Lynn Dawson, Frederick W. de Albuquerque, Samuel Detta, Stephanie Alexandra de Padua, Andrew Patrick Dixon, Meredith Elizabeth Dodd, Caitlin Marie Donnelly, Jeffrey Ray Dunifin, Samuel Earl Ekman, Laura Jean Eichten, Michelle M. Ellis, Blake Edward Fowler, Joshua Andrew Feiger, Jason Adam Feld, Lauren Nicole Flager, Aaron Michael Fournier, Ethan Drew Frenchman, Catherine Ann Funkhauser. Catherine is being hooded by her father, Wilson P. Funkhauser, a member of the law school class of 1973. Robert Stephen Galbo, Nathan Scott Gimple, Ishmael Anthony Green, Nathan Samuel Greenberg, Robert Allen Greer, Peter Albert Gutchie, Stephen Brendan Hagenboo, Joseph Michael Hammond, Robert Gardner Hammond, Richard Hanania, Caleb J. Ham Hanlon.
Melanie Beth Harmon. Christine Nicole Harvat. Maria Ann Hassett. Christopher Steph Heasley. Ryan Matthew Hayner. Graham George Holton Hennessy. Patrick Ryan Herndon. Alejandro Alfonso Herrera. Danielle Christine Hildreth. Samuel Hollander. Rebecca Margaret Taylor Horwitz. Bradley George Hubbard. Kara Danielle Hooley. Chaselyn Ray Hunt. Alina E. Yarvey. Todd Takashi Itami. Jeremy Eugene Jones. Maxwell B. Kampner Williams. Philip Andrew Capel. Shi Yoon Kim. Jeremy Scott Klein. Courtney Lynn Kleshensky. Ramey Paul Kornblit. Jessica Ryan Krall. Jaida Kundu. David Joseph Kercheski. Sonia Lar Pastor. Kyle Andrew Lawrence. Hillary Ann Lee Wong. Samuel Bruce Lineweber. Dustin Arthur Little. Daniel S. Lim. Carrie Ann Limbeek. Jennifer Marie Lynn. Meg Kalikman Lippincott. Alexandra Marjorie Lucas. Asher Harrison Lozado. Joshua Patrick Mahoney. Meredith Lee Mann. Heather Ann Mapes. Catherine Mary Matloop. Sonali Rema Meta Maulik. Casey James Magushan. Jack Mitchell McNeely. Taylor A. R. Mian. Shatan Cecilia Menzi. Brittany A. Merrill. Jessica Alma Michaels. 
Jessica is being hooded by her aunt, Catherine Fitzpatrick, a member of the law school class of 1995. Bernard C. Miller, Jr. Lauren Marie Modelski. Benjamin Abraham Montanez. Christopher Stephen Mortorf. Angus Faye Nee. Brett Robert Nolan. <laughs> Stephanie Ellen Norton. Sarah Elise Noodleman. Maria de las Victorias Artuando. Kimball Dean Parker. Anthony Daniel Pastore. Elizabeth Lee Payne. Maria Teresa Pellegrini. Tiffany Swangfung Fan. David Yung Sung P. Timothy Conrad Pickert. Jennifer Wilsinski Plagman. Miranda Punai. Andrew Layton Porter. Matthew Larson Porter. Christina Nicole Parasis. Kimberly Michelle Roten. Eliza Clark Reif. Harry Tomas Rimmelauer. Andrew William Robb. Ian David Rogers. Evan Michael Rose. Garrett Robert Rose. Meredith Filak Rose. Marilyn Bosky Rosen. Patrick Matthew Roy. Graham William Safty, Mark Allen Sater, Ingrid Elise Scholes, Scott Andrew Schoenfeld, Laura Ann Sexton. <coughs> Diane Amy Shrewsbury. <laughs> Ashley Brooke Simmons. Adam James City. Peter Carmen Soldado. Jonathan C. Spendlove. Sarah Margaret Stout. Nicholas W. Steenland. Adam Michael Susser. Robert Halleck Svensk. 
Charles Andrew Talpas. Nathan Arlen Tanner. Jeffrey Allen Tate. Daniel Taylor Cohart. Natalie Deo Thompson. William Thomas Thompson. Laura Lee Thornton. Jean Catherine Tinkham. Emily Ann Underwood. Emily Catherine Van Wyck. Jonathan David Volk. Tessa Suzanne Walker. Adam Shear Walwork. Vania Wen Wang. Aaron Russell Wagren. Kevin John Wessel. Aaron Elizabeth Marie Whalen. Elizabeth Heather White. Morgan White Smith. Jonathan L. Wiggins, Jr. John Mason Wilkes. Paxton J. Williams. Jamie T. Willis. Christine Michelle Wooden. David Thomas Wolston. Mishan Renai Rowe. Ichin Wu. Catherine Leoe Wang. Noah Butler Yavitz. Adrian Nicole Young. <laughs> Kenneth Allen Young. <laughs> Justin Yu. Charles David Zagnoli. Michael Z. Zhu. Congratulations to the JD class of 2013. Dean Schill, the student I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation which contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty of the law school, I have the honor to present the recipient of the degree of Doctor of Jurisprudence as conferred by the Board of Trustees. I congratulate this graduate on the successful completion of a program of advanced study in the law school culminating in the degree of Doctor of Jurisprudence. Will the graduate please come forward to receive your academic hood 
and then your diploma as I call your name. Rodrigo Jose Delavo Sweat. Well, congratulations to the class of 2013. <laughs> this concludes our 15th diploma and hooding ceremony. And I now invite all of you back to the law school for reception in honor of our graduates. Please keep in mind that another ceremony is going to actually come in here shortly after we leave. So if you can, leave the area and head back to the law school rather than sort of hanging around in here. Um, and, but please keep your seats, everyone, so we can have the recessional of the faculty and the graduates outside. So thank all of you for coming, and once again, congratulations, be well, and keep in touch with us.